Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. We've got an exciting topic today. We're gonna to talk about electric vehicle motor selection. Let's get to it. So today we're gonna to go through some of the things that I think about when I'm selecting a motor. So for motor application, you're really looking for the amount of power that it has for what you're needing it to do. So for my video today, we're talking about moving a car. So lots of uh, weight, you're looking to kind of travel at speed and accelerate. Like conventional internal combustion engines, um, there's a lot of variables to consider. So if you are building something for a dump truck, you're gonna size or need a different motor than for a sports car. They may have very similar ratings for horsepower, but torque may be really different. Some of the main things we're gonna be looking at today is the power of the motor, the weight of the motor, the cost of the motor, we'll also put in torque and the speed of the motor. So the speed of the motor matters in that um, it kind of determines your top speed, but there's other factors like gearing. The average car has a two foot diameter tire and at 60 miles per hour, that's traveling around 840 revolutions per minute. So 840 RPM. A lot of the motors we'll look at today will have RPMs up to like 18,000. So it doesn't mean we're gonna be going that fast. There's usually a gear reduction in that. And the gear reduction affects the torque. So again, you can imagine there's lots of different variables, but we're gonna go ahead and start looking at some of these motors. Okay, today we are gonna talk about motor selection. And I realized as I was doing this that, so this will be good for anybody that's looking to go through this process. So the motors I did research on were basically motors that I knew of and motors that people suggested I research um, for my last video. So I'm going to kind of go from, I'll call it low to high as far as kind of horsepower, kilowatt ratings, and so on. So first up was net gain motors. Somebody suggested I do a warp nine. This is a challenging one because I've looked at the specs on multiple different websites and they all say about 32 horsepower at 165 pounds of weight. This, I, I know people have built very quick cars with this sort of setup. I don't have any specifications that say otherwise. So this one will be kind of a hard one to determine how good it is because it says it's just 32 horsepower. Again, looks like you can pick one up here for about 2000 bucks. So here we have the Nissan Leaf. It is 80 kilowatts or about 107 horsepower. I was able to find one on eBay for about 700 bucks. There's another one here for 900, 1000. So again, I think they're available. And so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of keeping track in a chart here. I'm gonna keep track of the kind of power output as well as the weight and the cost. The weight I found for the Nissan Leaf motor was 280 pounds. So next up, someone suggested I look up Yasa. So they've got a 750R and it offers 200 kilowatts of peak power. And the weight is 37 kilograms. So I Googled the price. Again, they don't have it listed, but uh, there were some that kind of talked about around 17 grand. Here's one in Europe for around 10,000. Next up, we have the Ford electric crate motor. This is used in their Mach-E. This costs a little over $4,000, and it says it has 210 kilowatts of power, or about 281 horsepower. Next, we have the UQM. There's a couple different versions. Around $6,000 is the price. And this one says it has a maximum continuous power of 220 kilowatts. Next, we have the Tesla small front drive unit. This weighs in at 198 pounds and has 220 kilowatts of power. So again, looked up on eBay. Looks like you can get them around. Here's one 1400, 1750. Here we have the Tesla Model 3 rear drive unit. It has 265 kilowatts of power and weighs 196 pounds. 
This site says $5,000 and looks like you can get them on eBay for around $4,000. This next one, I don't even know that I know how to say it. Proteon Drive. This is an interesting technology as it has the hubs in the wheel. So in the wheel itself is where it has the motors. And so you could do four motors or two motors. Anyway, so each motor has 60 kilowatts of power. Again, wanting four wheel drive, that would be 320 kilowatts. Each motor weighs in at 36 kilograms for a total weight of 144 kilograms. Here is the MRAX 348. So at first I thought it was only an 800 volt system. It does look like right here they offer a 420 volt system. Peak power is 380 kilowatts. The weight is around 42 kilograms. Again, they didn't offer a price on their website. So there's one price here that says 59,000, but somebody on a website said it should be around 11,000. So that's what I'm gonna put. And last but not least, we've got the Tesla rear drive unit. So they have several variants. They've got the performance variant. This right here is just the, I'll call it the standard, 400 kilowatts of power coming in at around 290 pounds or 132 kilograms. And if you would like, you can pick them up on eBay for around $3,000. All right, I threw all those into a table real quick so you guys can take a look. Again, I feel like I'm not giving the Warp 9 motor a fair shake. So if you guys feel like there's some better numbers that I can use, please let me know. So first I just have this sorted by kind of the power. But if you'd like to sort by the price per kilowatt, Shazam! So again, this one will tell you that the Tesla Model S, by far, I shouldn't say by far, but the Tesla Model S has a great price per kilowatt. So if you guys are looking to do uh, conversions for the, for the money, you'll get a lot of power. Here we are sorting by power to weight ratio. So as you can see, the EM racks, M racks, has a huge advantage here. Very lightweight, a lot of power. One other thing I didn't really talk about, um, this is just motors. So obviously you'll need a controller to control the motor. So that wasn't uh, addressed in this video. Maybe I'll cover that one next time. I realize I probably left some key motors off the list. So please put in the comments below what motors you think I should also consider. I'll go through a couple of my closing thoughts. So some of the motors are clearly made for cars. Some of them even come from cars. The nice thing about this is they kind of already have the gearing and things already set for kind of a vehicle. Some of the others have great motor specs, but you'd have to kind of create gearing that would meet what you're looking for. Other things, a lot of the motors you can find used, which means you can get them for relatively inexpensive, where others, I just couldn't find any used. So you'd have to buy new and they'd be more expensive. For my application, the motors that kind of jump out to me, I've done the Tesla before, so again, I think the learning curve there would be a little less steep. The other thing is they have great power. Uh, you can get them for relatively inexpensive. The first build I did, I did a performance version of the rear drive unit of a Tesla Model S. And it's about 475 kilowatts, which is 637 horsepower. And that is, it's just amazing. It's got so much power. Um, I've not even come close to using the full potential yet. For this next build, I really wanted to do an all wheel drive version, which means I would likely do a motor up front as well as a motor in the rear. The question I have is, should that be like a Model 3? Should I do a Model S front and a Model S rear? I've heard that uh, the way the Tesla Plaid is, is basically it's just three Model 3 motors. So a Model 3 motor in the front, essentially two connected in the rear. So if we wanted to go plaid, we could get three Model 3 motors. So let me know in the comments what you think I should do. That'll do it for this week. See you next week.